Tyree Gillespie will be a free safety, a post safety, and Carl Joseph will be a strong safety, also known as a box safety, in Gus Bradley's scheme, and that is 100% confirmed by Mike Mayock. On the Raiders YouTube channel, he did a full interview. He did a great interview, in my opinion, uh, and he talked a lot about different situations, offensive line safeties and defensive guys. And I want to just jump into some of what was said. Uh, first and foremost, let's just jump in from the beginning. Uh, Mike Mayock talked a little bit about the offensive line, and he confirmed something that I was told in the past, which is Colton Miller and Andre James are working. Not only are they working, Richie Incognito's in the building, and these guys are putting in a thousand percent effort into being a good offensive line unit. Uh, Mike Mayock said the following. While we all respect the guys who have departed, we are excited about the guys who are now here. Uh, these guys love football. There's been a big group of offensive linemen in here prior to the draft. Led by Colton Miller and Andre James, they are building chemistry. And that is such an important thing for you guys to fully understand what Mike Mayock is talking about. Uh, I did an interview with Colton Miller uh, months back, and Colton was telling me how he's in the building every single day working out. He told me a little bit about the uh, protocols of what it takes to actually be able to work out and all the COVID testing they had to go through. Uh, and if they missed one day of not being COVID tested, they basically had to not be in the facility for the next 14 days. Uh, so basically, they had to show up every day, right? Otherwise, you weren't able to um, come back into the building for like 14 days. So uh, when you think about Colt Miller telling me that, and then Mike Mayock now confirming how these guys have been in the facility working out, getting stronger, uh, putting in the effort, off-season training. That's such an important part of having a good season. I'm glad that Mike Mayock confirmed that. Uh, just like Mayock said, I'm, you know, I'm very thankful for the guys that were here before these guys, right? Uh, you got Rodney Hudson and Gabe Jackson who spent a ton of time with the Raiders. And now you have guys like Andre James taking over. And I'm okay with that. I, I think Andre James, Denzel Good will be perfectly fine on the inside for the offensive line. Uh, jumping forward, Mayock also talked a little bit about uh, the prototypical safety. And that is Trayvon Merrick. He had a lot of great things to say about Trayvon Merrick. Uh, one of the things Mike Mayock did say is he said something to the tune of we sat with Gus Bradley before the draft and we talked about what is the prototypical strong safety and what the prototypical free safety is. Uh, we talked about the differences in their build. Uh, Mike also went on to say that Trayvon Merrick is the prototype is the prototype of, of the Gus Bradley scheme as a post safety. Uh, now we all already knew that he would be the post safety, but Mike Mayock confirmed that Trayvon Merrick is the type of player that Gus Bradley wants to play free safety. And the most interesting part is that Trayvon Merrick is probably the best safety in this class. So the fact that the Raiders got the best safety in the class and the best safety in the class just happens to be a prototype of Gus Bradley. Can you see the, the results that are about to come? Can you see how many interceptions and tackles for a loss and batted balls and just playing over the top and shutting down guys like Tyree Kill? Can you just think of how many times Trayvon Merrick is going to make the correct play? A lot of people said Trayvon Merrick could be a top 12 pick solely based on talent. And most people had him in the top seven when you looked at just the talent alone, not considering the importance of offensive tackle or, or quarterback. Trayvon Merrick is the guy. Mike Mayock also went on to say uh, he is the prototype because he has great range, he has great ball skills, and he is the kind of guy who can catch the ball and take it back to Ron Miles on the sideline. Ron Miles is the Raiders defensive back coach. Um, and I don't disagree with that, man. Uh, Mike Mayock also went on to say Jonathan Abram is a talented guy. He's been working like crazy. He's consistently coming to work trying to get back. If we can play that Cam Chancellor strong safety position, or if he can play that Cham Cam Chancellor position. Uh, and then right after that, he went on to say, we brought guys in like Carl Joseph. And right after that, he said both Abram and Carl Joseph are strong safeties. Um, and that's such an important part for us to understand. A lot of people wanted Carl Joseph to be the Raiders free safety, including myself. Uh, before we got Trayvon Merrick, before we got Tyree Gillespie, I would have just assumed that Carl Joseph is the post safety, right? There's no way Carl Joseph would have came off the bench if we didn't have Trayvon Merrick and Tyree Gillespie. 
And I think that's why it's so important that the Raiders got two free safeties. Uh, because Mike Mayock also said the following. He said, you look at free safety and Merrick is there. And then right after that, he said, Tyree Gillespie is another guy we had a high grade on. Uh, so when he was still on the board, we kind of had to move up to go get a guy like him. Um, Mayock also said, we didn't go into the draft thinking we should draft two safeties. And that right there is the quote that confirms that Trayvon Merrick will be a free safety. Right, because that's exactly what what Mike Mayock just said, um, and I'm pumped up about this. I I think Mike Mayock has confirmed a couple of things. Uh, when Tyree Gillespie was in college, he played free safety a ton, and I remember going on to a couple of different shows with a couple of different other content creators, and we talked about where Tyree Gillespie would fit. Uh, and basically, when that question would get brought up, people would say multiple times that Tyree Gillespie is going to be the strong safety. He's the guy that's going to eventually replace Jonathan Abram. Um, and I said to myself, how are you going to play a guy at strong safety that played free safety most of the time in college? It didn't make sense. You don't just take a guy who plays post safety and convert him into a box strong safety. And basically, Tyree Glispie is a free safety, man. And again, I'm not surprised with that at all. I think the Raiders are so deep on the defensive side of the ball. If you guys want to check out the full video, you guys can just go to the Raiders YouTube channel. Uh, Mike Mayock touches on a couple other things. But jumping forward and kind of staying with the cornerback position, kind of staying with that secondary unit. Could Amik Robertson play at outside corner? I want to know what you guys think about this. You know, I do think that Amik Robertson had his most successful career at outside corner. And the thing is, is coming into a, a rookie season, having to adjust to the game, and then at the same time, having to learn a whole new position, you're really hindering any sort of player. Any rookie that's going to come in, you're really going to impact that player. And I think the Raiders did no favors by taking Amik Robertson and putting him to the inside. That's such a hard position to learn. He had his most success at outside corner. Now last year, according to PFF, he had some terrible, terrible games. And he only played 35 snaps for a good reason. Uh, the Raiders not only had LaMarcus Joyner playing the slot, uh, but Amik Robertson really didn't perform very well. Uh, minus the Kansas City Chiefs game. If, if you look at this game, uh, he was really, he had a 75 grade. That's actually a really good game, a uh, grade. Um, he, he covered nine times in that game. Uh, and he was not even targeted, right? As you guys can see over here, uh, he didn't give up any catches, was not targeted. That means nine times that Amik Robertson played, he shut someone down. Now, I looked at those snaps. All nine of them came from the inside. Uh, but it is still interesting. Now, here's the thing, right? Uh, there has been speculation that Amik Robertson is looked at by Gus Bradley as an outside corner. And I know a lot of people say, well, he's too short to be an outside corner. Uh, here's the thing, right? There's no prototype. There's no such thing as this guy's too short. This guy's too tall. This guy's too slow. If you can play, you can play. There's no, there's nothing else to that. Uh, Amik Robertson, I do think should be on the outside. Uh, from what I remember, he had eight or nine interceptions on the outside in his final season at Louisiana Tech. Uh, he also had 18 or 19 pass breakups, right? His the ability for him to get his hands on the ball, uh, it's second to none. And I would be surprised if the Raiders decided to keep him on the inside when in reality, he could be a good outside corner. You know, I know people might say, well, we already have Arnett and Mullen and even Casey Hayward playing the outsides. Casey Hayward is not a long-term player for the Raiders. We need long-term guys. And if Amik Robertson has shown in the past that he's had success on the outside, why not see what he can do on the outside once again? I think it makes a ton of sense to put Amik on the outside. Finally, Colton Miller is due for a Pro Bowl nod in 2021, written by CJ Erickson. What do you guys think about this? Is Colton Miller headed for a Pro Bowl? Uh, personally, I don't really care about Pro Bowls. It's nice, but Pro Bowls are typically uh, either players who are on winning teams, right? There's a reason why when the Ravens uh, won 13, 14 games a couple seasons ago, uh, there's a reason why 11 guys went to the Pro Bowl that year. At the same time, when the Raiders made the Pro Bowl, or when the Raiders made the playoffs in 2016, we had a couple of guys hit the Pro Bowl. Um, and then at the same time, you have guys missing the Pro Bowl from good teams that made it just the year before because they are on a good team, right? So I don't think a Pro Bowl is that big of a deal. For me, all pro matters much more than a Pro Bowl. 
Uh, All Pro, in my opinion, is th- that, those are people that basically know the game of football. Pro Bowl is just a popularity contest, in my personal opinion. Um, but let's see what this author or this writer writes in, in his article. Uh, after being John Gruden's controversial first pick in his head coaching return to the Raiders in 2018, Colt Miller is thriving heading into 2021. In 2018, Gruden returned to the Raiders, started his tenure with a bang. Not only did he trade all pro Cleo Mack to the Bears, he also made a questionable at that time first round pick, according to many scouts and media pundits alike. Uh, while many mocked Miller in 2018, in 2020, the former UCLA put to rest the reach mindset of his critics. Uh, Colt Miller was the anchor of the Raiders' offensive line in 2020. Last season for the Silver and Black, it could be said that Colton was the team's best offensive lineman. Miller started in 14 games and only missed two due to a nagging ankle injury despite that. There weren't many flaws to be found in game day, game day performance. Colton has always been a sound left tackle and pass protection, but he also showed that he can be a difference maker in the run game last season. Uh, for the most part, uh, the soon-to-be fourth-year Raider has come along nicely as Las Vegas foundational left tackle. While he isn't the strongest offensive tackle, Cohen displayed his above-average athleticism at the offensive tackle position more times than not in 2020. With that being said, both the coaching staff and organization rewarded him uh, this past offseason. Um, I don't disagree with anything about what this author is saying. You know, I, I do think that Colt Miller is headed to a Pro Bowl or All Pro this season. Now, uh, he was not the perfect player last season, right? By far, he was not the perfect player. He definitely has things he needs to improve on. Uh, for me personally, and I'll just kind of get into this at a deeper level uh, and just stick with me here. I'm going to go all over the place. When it comes to Cohen Miller and his run blocking specifically, uh, if you had to give him an, a grade, right, a, a letter grade, when it comes to his run blocking in zone specific situations, he's an A+. He'll make every single uh, block. When it comes to power running specific plays, I think he falls to like a C minus D uh, because I see him lose so many times in power specific situations, right? Power blocking, zone blocking, two completely different things. Uh, Tom Cable primarily runs zone, but when uh, Richie Incognito got hurt and John Simpson kind of had to come in at the same time Sam Young got replaced, Uh, And then Trent Brown came back in. The Raiders did a lot of power stuff. And I think that made Colton lose a ton last year. Uh, I don't know why it's this way. I mean, I know why it's this way. But uh, sometimes players are just better at one type of block as opposed to the other. And it's because maybe at UCLA, Colton ran a lot of zone. Uh, But either way, zone blocking, he's great at. Power blocking, he's not as great at. Uh, Pass protecting specifically, he's great in certain situations. Speedy guys, he for the most part can handle that. Power guys, he tends to do not as great, right? Guys that bull rush him. He kind of struggles in my opinion. Uh, But overall, I think Colt Miller's made tremendous strides from his rookie season to where he's at this season. And going into next season, his fourth season with the Raiders. All pro, pro bowler. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you guys next time with another video.